I'm going to tell my Katie Bell story. I wrote about it in a piece we called Here I Am that we ran on all of our platforms here at FS1 a few years back now. But I only wrote a couple of paragraphs about Katie Bell, and I couldn't quite do it justice the way I'm going to try to do it justice right now on this platform in a longer form with a little more depth. And I'll disqualify myself again. You, you can scoff at what I'm about to say. You, you can undercut it. You can disqualify. You, wh whatever you want to do, God bless you. You can say I'm over-dramatizing. You can say I have no idea what I'm talking about, and you could be right. When it comes to race, I could well be wrong. But in this case, I don't care. I'm going to tell you what's in my heart. And I'm going to tell you why this is the essence of who I am in life and on television. Now for the tricky part. Katie Bell Henderson worked for my grandmother in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. My grandmother traveled in her work and she needed somebody to run the household. And Katie Bell had been with her for a long time and, and Katie Bell took over the household. My, my immediate family, my extended family, I, I never got any racist vibes from anybody. Everybody loved Katie Bell, but they treated her like an equal. They, they treated her like one of the family. You're just going to have to trust me on this. She was an authority figure. Nobody in my, my family, my cousins, n nobody, except for one quick story I'll tell in a second. I, I didn't hear the N-word. I heard it at school occasionally on the playground when I was a little kid, but not from my parents or my grandparents. I, I just didn't hear it. Katie Bell was just Katie Bell to me. So I, I never was taught to look down on her. I only looked up. Her parents came from Birmingham, Alabama, but Katie Bell was born and raised on the south side of Chicago. And trust me, she was as tough as she was sweet. She had the biggest, quickest smile I've ever seen. And she had the biggest, quickest laugh I've ever heard. But when it came to discipline, Katie Bell would put her hands on me. She was a stoutly built woman and she was strong and, and she would punish me when I was wrong. She taught me the word, I think when I was like five or six years old, she, she called me a hypocrite because of the way I was treating my brother, I think it was. But the point was, my household was a wreck because my father and my mother were alcoholic wrecks. My mother admitted to me later in life, she just didn't want kids and she had three. And we got put with different relatives at different times, but I always wound up sometimes often alone at my grandmother's with Katie Bell because I loved Katie Bell and I think she loved me more than any of the grandchildren. I just got that sense from her, it could be wrong. But I spent an inordinate amount of time with Katie Bell. Everything I learned about right and wrong came from Katie Bell. Katie Bell was far more of a mother to me than my mother was, far more. I trusted her. I believed in her and she treated me like her son. I watched TV endlessly with her, her favorite soap opera, Edge of Night, her favorite sort of cowboy soap opera at night it was called Gunsmoke. Google it, check it out, but it's Dodge City. It was, it was actually a soap opera in the old west. And she loved those shows and I loved watching her love those shows. And in the summers, she would have her granddaughter down to stay with her from Chicago named Audrey. And I can't tell you how many hours I spent with Audrey. She was exactly my age. 
at ages six, seven, eight, in my grandmother's backyard, just making up stupid games just to pass the time. And I learned a lot about Chicago. And obviously, I learned a little about black people. Never really thought about it. It, it wasn't like a conscious effort, but just by association, you want to talk about a blessing for me? You, you want to talk about thank you, God? I mean, to me, God sent me Katie Bell, and she was a God-fearing woman who sometimes took me on Sunday to her church, an AME church in Oklahoma City that was obviously all black. So I got to experience what it felt like to be the only white face in a black congregation. And I was just a little kid and they treated me like a little prince. And yet, <laughs> compared to the church I went to, a Methodist church named Epworth Methodist Church near my grandmother's house, I wanted to go to Katie Bell's church. Man, they got into it. It was fun. It was joyful. It was a lot of shouting from the congregation. It was singing with all your heart and might. And I actually asked my mom, could I go? No, you can't go there every Sunday. You, you can't. You just can't do it. I, I just love being around Katie Bell because I loved her spirit. I loved her energy. And I loved her ability just to laugh at life. As bad as it could get, she, she could laugh because, because she came from a long line of people who had no choice but to laugh because of the pain and suffering they had endured. And my wife, Ernestine, sometimes says to me, you know, it's funny. She said, I always get the sense you're actually more comfortable around black people than you are white people. Not that I don't love, I love everybody. I, I just do. I just love being around people if we're talking sports, obviously. And yet, Ernestine sees me if we're out in public. Black people come up. God, we, we love Undisputed. You know, we, we don't like what you say about LeBron occasionally. Some do, some don't. But, but it's always good-natured, high-spirited, good-spirited. And Ernestine always says, you just light up with, with the black. I do. I, I do. I just, my partners on TV, black partners. Another Google for you. The late, great Ralph Wiley, back in my days on Jim Rome show, my debate partner, no longer with us. What a mind he had. Michael Wilbon, my days on Prime Monday ahead of Monday Night Football and ESPN. Of course, the man who's like a brother to me, Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Now, Lil Wayne, who's not like a brother, he is my brother. And I'll leave you with this. And you can take or leave this story, but a couple of years back, Ernestine had connected with a, a psychic, a black man in New York named Joseph, a mystic, a shaman. And Ernestine said, he is just extraordinary. And you should talk to him because he will enlighten you about you. And, and you'll be shocked at what he'll be able to know about you. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah skeptical, not buying it. And she just hounded me until I finally said, okay, I'll try it, but I don't believe in it. She said, well, just try it. If you don't like it, hang out. So I called Joseph. She said, he's God based. So he's going to pray with you to start the conversation and then you'll go. You can ask him questions. And I had no expectations. We prayed for a minute. And then as we started, I was to ask him some questions. All of a sudden, he interrupts. He says, wait a second, somebody wants to join. I said, what do you mean somebody wants to join? Somebody from the other side wants to join. I said, 
I'm thinking to myself, this is the biggest bunch of baloney. I said, okay. And, and then my first thought was, could this be my mom? Please, please don't be my mom. He says, it's a black woman. And I'm like, a black woman? It's a black woman. And I said, Katie Bell? I haven't seen Katie Bell since I was 20 years old. No longer obviously with us. He says, it's Katie Bell. And she wants you to know, <laughs> excuse me, how proud she is of you. True story. And I just, I just broke down. And Katie Bell, if you're listening, and I do believe you are, please know how thankful I am for you. And how much I love you. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from The Skip Bayless Show. And don't forget to check out the full episode of the show wherever you get your podcasts by clicking the link in the description.